Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance. That's Dan Swanson, and this is Jackson Lake State Park. We've been here before. If you're a fan of the show, you've seen us here before. Dan's never been here. Never. Walleye fishing guide right here, but never been to this lake. We did a beat down here two years ago this same week. I'm looking forward to it. Well, we haven't been back since. Dan's never been here, like I said. So we're going to see if we can kind of duplicate that success. It's the first week of summer here. It's going to be hot and windy today. Last time it was hot and calm, so we'll mix it up a little bit and see what happens. So stay tuned, get comfortable. It should be fun. All right. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Peterson Toyota, Fort Collins, Colorado. St. Croix Rods, best rods on earth. Berkeley, catch more fish. Abu Garcia, for life. Otterbox, the great outdoors just got greater with coolers, dry duffels, and tumblers. This is only my third time ever at this lake in all the years I've lived here, and each of those trips has been separated by a couple of years. But each time I have been here, they've related to this west bank of the lake. So we're starting here again to see what, what transpires, even though today we have wind. Green fish. There we go. And oh, oh. not this time, Dan. No, oh, man, but that, he was on there. Yeah, well, I, that's OK. They always seem to relate to this western flat. Now, the inlet's coming in here, and then you can see the dam swings all the way around there. If we don't catch them along here, uh, then we'll start extrapolating. But we're starting off by fishing what I would say to some degree is memories. There we go, Dano. And that, friends, is why you come back to areas you've caught them in the past. And I am not a fan, as a general rule. Come here, fish. There we go. go Dano. That's, that's nice why you there. bring Dano. And that's what they've grown into, guys. Let me get a hold of this fish real quick, and we'll get him out of the net, because we're not keeping fish today. One thing to keep in mind, too, is we had significant uh, significant thunderstorms late yesterday, as in like uh, golf ball size hail right here on the lake. You guys can hear the roofers, they're already in, in play here, getting roof sealed back up. And so we really don't know what to expect out of the fish from that standpoint, is that they, you know, the, the heavy thunderstorms. And last time we were here, it was glass calm, high bright sun at 100 degrees, and we still caught them really good. And I think that, that 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 stable weather pattern is is an excellent thing whereas right now we've got a really turbulent weather pattern and uh and significant weather now dan you fish walleyes more than i do what's your take on that do they like stable weather same as other fish absolutely they do stable weather absolutely. patterns yeah, yeah. It's, and i i think a lot of times a thunderstorm or a big storm like they had the other night can put them down for a while right and i think as the day progresses i think the fish will start biting once better. the water warms a little bit more yeah I th and i think they kind of move around i i don't know i don't know exactly but i think they get shocked a little well sure and we're literally talking about like um like golf ball or racquetball size hail was here yesterday on our drive into Jack Jackson Lake State Park this morning. There's trees battered everywhere. All the crops around here are battered. And the whole thing about the walleyes at this time of year is it's a bait thing. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. They, they're following bait. They're done spawning. They're not doing anything other than following bait fish at this point. Now, this is a shad-based lake. That's the primary forage species in here is shad. And so these fish, for sure, are going to key in on shad. Now, being that it's June, I would fully expect that the shad will have spawned for the year, and so there's probably a whole bunch of little baby shad in the lake as well. And that may be something that the walleyes are keying on. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Peterson Toyota, Fort Collins, Colorado. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood spend more time on the water. So this is the color I've been throwing. This is the color I'm switching to. The difference being is with this water and the sun coming up, I've got a little bit of shine on this one and I've got the chartreuse. I'm hoping that that chartreuse is going to help fish locate the bait and, uh, and get me a few more bites. So we'll see how that transpires. Dan, yours is fire tiger. Hold yes. that one up when it comes to the boat. Let me see that. Swing that over here if you would. Full of weeds right now. Okay, that's all right. Uh, but at any rate, you get the idea. There's the weeds that are growing on the bottom, but you get the idea of the color pattern that Dan's throwing in that just got bit here a couple of minutes ago by that nice walleye. So I'm going to go to a real bright one as well. We'll see what happens. But in, in, in both cases, it's just to get fish to locate the bait. And what did you just tell me is an old walleye saying, if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. That's is right. that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> all right, there we go, guys. We just tied that real bright colored flicker shad on. 
And uh, he's just a little guy, Dan, don't even worry about him. Don't even worry about that, and that's not what we're talking about. That is a wiper, and a small little wiper at that, so we'll get him off of there. There's lots of the easy fish. There's lots of these easy fish. Easy, when you get a wiper like this here, I'm not even gonna mess with him. That fish is sharp and dangerous, and you don't really wanna mess with them if you can. Hey, you got a walleye. <laughs> yeah, is that one? I wasn't even sure what happened. My crankbait just quit vibrating. Uh, that's a little smaller wall. That might be, that's one of the smallest walleyes I've ever caught. And I think, truthfully, the smallest walleye I've ever caught, we caught here last time we were here filming. And that's because this lake is stocked heavily. They spend, Colorado Parks Wildlife spends a lot of money to make sure there's walleyes in here. And as you can see, there's guys fishing all around us right now. Last time we filmed here, same thing. Guys were trolling circles around us then as well. And the beauty of it is everybody's catching fish. Yep, fish, fish. Yep, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, Dan, uh, I think you can handle that one. I think I got that one. You think? I think I got that now, one. Now, Dan, that speaks volumes to the fact that they have been putting so many fish in here. And I want to point out, guys, that that this fishery is one of the most popular walleye fisheries in the state. You can put that sucker back, Dano. But this fishery is one of the most popular walleye fisheries in the state, so they put a ton of them in here. The Ray Fish Hatchery, which is where all the walleyes for the state are produced, is not too far up the road from here, and they put lots of them in here. We're, we're looking for the ones that were the ones from two years ago that <laughs> grew up, and you found the ones that were stocked last year. Yeah. So we'll keep after them and see what else we can catch. Yeah, but, it's always good to see small fish because that means you got a good fishery going. That's right, uh, and, and all the size classes. But also the other thing that's important is you got another one on that flicker shad, uh -huh. and that's telling me that's for sure the right bait. We've now landed all the fish we've caught have been a crankbait. Look at Dano go. Yeah. I think Dano's got the, right, got the right color. Bait. He's got the right bait. Good on you, Dano. That's why Dano's the walleye angler, and I'm the Feels net freak better. today. Let me slide by there, and I'll get the net for you, Mr. You Swanson. Him? Well, sure. Oh, all right. We'll net him. That's, That's a, a nice better. one. That's a nice one, Dano. So, guys, these are the fish from two years ago that are growing up and turning into a more respectable size walleye. And, uh, you know, two years ago, almost everything in here was 15, 16, 17 inches long. We had to measure like 30 of them to get our keepers. Now the problem is most of them are over the slot and you can go ahead and put him back since we're not eating him but that's a beautiful walleye and let's show him your bait Dan. You can see guys it's an extremely bright colored flicker shad and uh, and unfortunately I don't even have one in the boat that color which is dang shame because Dano's going to put it on me with that one. The biggest thing to take away so far from today is the wind is the difference. Uh, when we were here before, it was glass calm. And yes, we caught a couple of them on flicker shads, but it really wasn't the right bait for the day. Those fish were on the chow and they would eat a lot of stuff up to and including a flicker shad. Today, we can't get them to bite anything but the crankbait, and I'm sure that has to do with the wind that we're dealing with. When you have wind, you need some vibration or some flash or something to help fish locate your bait. In our case, we have both wind and heavy off-colored water and flicker shad is a good call in that scenario. Yeah, I think the nice thing about the flicker shad, it's got some rattles in it too, so in this dirty water and this bright colored bait, I think it really helps those fish find it. Yeah, and the bright colored bait is a key thing. That's a key part of it for sure. And these things are hitting the bottom, guys. I want to point out we're only in five and a half feet of water right here, so the baits are hitting the bottom most of the way back, which is why you're going to see some of these false hook sets as the bait hits stuff on the bottom. I can tell you that in all these western reservoirs, uh, first of all, June's a great time to catch walleyes, a, a fantastic time to catch walleyes in general. And the other thing I can tell you about them is in most cases, they move a lot with the water. And uh, when the water moves up and down, so do the walleyes. Uh, some of them in western reservoirs will plot and suspend and come up high in the, in the water column. Fish. Did you get him? Yeah. The Hanno is just working me today, and I love every second of it. <laughs> we don't care, guys. This show is not about Chad's ego. Let me stop the boat right here. This show is about how can we teach people to catch fish. And I think right now, what I'm figuring out, Dano, is the flicker shad's not a bad way to catch them. I think it's a great way. It's it, a great bait. I use a lot of them. You got boxes oh, and boxes of yeah, them. I got boxes and boxes of them. That's a good sized fish. It's a nice fish. Yeah, he's, he's got Dano. He's got me in. Uh, you know, there was no head shake shake there for a while. I was worried. Yeah, you thought maybe you had a carp, didn't you? Yeah, well, maybe I do. This lake's famous for its carp. <laughs> maybe no, I do. He goes. Uh, I hope not. After we just talked about it, I might have jinxed you on that, Dano. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have a big walleye. I hope I have a big walleye. I do too. Let's see what we got. I don't, I haven't seen it. Oh, you got yeah. a, is it a walleye? 
I didn't. Oh yeah, you got a horse of a wide nice Dano. Look at that one. That's why you bring Dan Swanson with you. And I want to point out that Dan Swanson is a walleye guide as well. In case you're curious, that uh, that's a good that's a good looking walleye, guys. We might have to get a still photo. That's a good looking walleye, but all those ones we were catching two years ago in the finesse baits. There he goes. Which we are now catching on the flicker shads, uh, and it's just a condition thing. It's the same week of the year, two years later. The boat's within about 50 feet of where we caught all of them last time, and Dan is putting it on them right now. It's nice work, time, Dan. Oh, <laughs> nice work, Dan. -o. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Lawrence. Find, navigate, dominate. Abu Garcia for life. St. Croix Rods, best rods on earth. So two of your three were in throwing out. Yeah. So if angles matter, your bait's moving from deep to shallow. It's true, but it's pretty flat here. Well, not where we were. Yeah, that's true. That's why I like that area. It rolls into that basin. Yeah. So you were fishing parallel with the drop. Now, one thing I always wonder about is what size of shad are they eating? Because one thing at this time of year you're going to find is three sizes of shad in this lake. Some big giant gizzards, some middle sized ones, and then some little tiny ones. And a lot of times it seems like which size of shad they're on can make a big difference. Now, we both guided a place called Boyd Lake in Colorado. Um, right now, there's tons of tiny little shad in there, like this big, like, like, like three quarter inch to one inch long shad. Those fish, uh, very easy to catch. Fish can just swim around and gorge on them, but they're not very big and very difficult to mimic. So that can be a part of the presentation that I think needs to be kept in mind. In this case, it seems to be, has always been that anything in the three inch range will get bit here. And the three times I've been here, this being the third, if you're somewhere around three inches long, you're a prime candidate to get eaten by a walleye in here. Right on that same exact spot. We are not leaving this spot again, guys. This buoy right here, guys, I want to point out three of the four fish we've caught. There's a nice one there. Not nothing like Dano's, but uh, we'll still take him. Nonetheless, I'm going to keep him tight in the net so we don't get our bait in the net. Dano, thanks for loaning me the bait. I want to point out that I didn't catch any walleyes until Dano <laughs> loaned me the bait. And normally, guys, I'm the first guy to say, well, you can get two or three things to work. But in this particular case, I'm not entirely convinced you can because I threw two or three other things and they did not work. So, got that one though. Yeah, you did. That one's about like the ones we caught last year, so or two years ago, I should say, when we were here. So I'm guessing that they've got a variety of your classes. We'll put them back because we're not keeping these guys. So if you guys are fans of the show at all, first of all, thank you. But second of all, you know that we talk a lot about fishing spots, not areas. I am not a huge fan of fishing areas. If I can fish a spot, I know that I can make precise presentations. I know what my depth control and all that needs to be. Uh, in this particular case, and, and Dan, we, we can talk about this, the trollers are catching more fish than us, or at least they're catching them quicker than us. Although, from what we can tell, we've caught the bigger fish. Um, it, 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 when you're fishing sand flats, you really don't have a lot of choice but to fish areas, correct? That's right. Yeah, they're scattered across the this, this sand flat, <clears throat> and so these fish are just roaming around in here. And so the, the, the objective is to cover water, and so the trollers are covering a lot of water, and that's that's yeah. why they're doing as well. It pains me to cover water. That's kind of a running joke between the fishful anchor camera guy and I. Cover water usually means I'm desperate. Well, in this particular case, what it means is that we know that uh, the fish are scattered and then you've got no choice but to cover water to locate them. Now, you think they move in pods, two or three, four, five fish? I mean, how do walleyes move around? Yeah, I think they, they do school around. You think? You know, they feed in schools. And there's the bigger ones maybe more alone than the, than the smaller ones, but the smaller ones certainly are in schools. All right, so I have one question, Dano. You and I are both fishing the same style of rods. We're fishing the exact same bait. You have yours on Trilene XL monofilament, nylon monofilament. Yes. And I have mine on Nanofil with a short fluorocarbon leader. Uh, what are your thoughts in general when you're walleye fishing on braid versus mono for particularly for a hard bait situation like like this? I use both actually, but in this situation, I think the, the mono is gonna help. I think it floats the bait up a little bit. It also got that stretch in it, which I think is an advantage. Softening. <clears throat> Softens the, the bait. You can fight the fish a little better. 
Um, I, I like it for that reason, but it doesn't get as deep as easily as it will on a, on a say, a nanofill or a fluorocarbon. Still picking up, still picking up leaves. I know, there's more of them down here. Seems to be more cotton now than there was. Got him right there. All right, good right job. Right on that spot, right on that drop. There we go. Nope, he's off. We don't need him. He's just a white bass. Oh. Got me all excited, man. Well, I, I think it's a white bass. Maybe not. No, it's a walleye. I haven't seen him yet. Yeah, it's a walleye. I, I thought, thought it was already... a white bass, guys. I ain't lying. <laughs> I thought you should Or a, a wiper. Well, I thought he came <laughs> off. He was coming right at the boat at full speed, guys. And it's kind of funny because we came back out here literally two years from the last time we were here on purpose to show you how the fish have grown up. And really what we've done is shown you more year classes. On that particular trip, all those fish looked really similar with the exception of a couple of really little ones. They all looked a lot like this one. And there's tons of those in here as well. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Otterbox, the great outdoors just got greater with hooters, dry duffels, and tumblers. St. Croix Rods, best rods on earth. Yes, sir. Look at there, Dano, carrying the show. Oh, yeah. He done got another one. Go, Dano. And I, oh, another nice one, too. Another nice walleye. Another nice, oh, he's barely hooked. Yeah. There we go. There hold go. him tight, hold him tight in the net. There you go, Nano. Uh -huh. And guys, that's a trick, by the way. If you'll hold your, your line tight when you net a fish, it'll keep them from rolling around in the net so bad and getting your hooks as bad. So yeah. that's something, yeah, I got a hold of him. And Dano, oh. easy, 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 guys. Look at there, guys, another one. So we keep making the drift. The wind picks up and goes down and picks up and goes down, but that's a cool looking fish. When they flare out like that, dude, I can see why guys do that. Can I put him back? You can put back. You want to kiss no, him? No, you no, can't. No, I okay. don't want to kiss any more walleyes. They got teeth. There you go. So guys, we're catching them pretty good now, but I want to point out the only thing we've been bit on today that they, they stuck on is a flicker shad or a bad shad. Got him right there. All right, good job. All right, there we go. And that same drop, guys. Yep. And I'm not sure. I think that's Walter, though. It does not feel like a white bass. That's so, nice or a, yeah, it might be. Right. Now that one will work, and we're gonna bring him right. Whoa, oh, dude, that is a fired-up walleye right there. <laughs> Holy schmoly, nicely done, Dan. You know, thank you, sir. And guys, I think on that note, I think you're getting the picture of what we're talking about about the fact that a fishery like this is going to be, you know, heavily stocked and prolific a lot of the year. It's a great opportunity at almost any weather condition to come and catch some walleyes like that. Now that is not a monster walleye by any stretch, but you know what that is? It's an eater. That's an eater. Dan knows right there, guys. We're going to put him back right there because we're not keeping fish today. All right, guys, we're going to step away from the fishing just for a minute when you join me lakeside while we cook some fish for a change. So we're going to make a spicy fish pasta dish. A couple uh, little background information. First of all, I cooked the pasta at home, the spaghetti, and then I tossed it with oil, some olive oil, and set it aside. But I also reserved some of the water, and that's going to be important. That pasta water is going to thicken our Sauce. Let's fire the camp chef up and we're gonna get this pan, start getting that pan hot. It'll get hot in no time flat. It's 30,000 BTU burning. So we'll get a big old squirt of olive oil in there. One little hot chili pepper. We're gonna just basically smash that into this dish. As this oil's coming up to temperature, we'll add some salt. And as soon as that oil gets hot like that, then in we wanna go with a whole bunch of garlic. As soon as it gets going good, and it's pretty close right there. Then this is a whole can of crushed tomatoes. We're gonna to add those gently. We're gonna let that go for just a second. And then the next thing I'm gonna add is the pasta water. I reserved this when I, when I boiled the pasta. And like I said, I recommend you do that as well. And I'm gonna put a pretty good dose of it in here. Probably, oh, maybe a half a cup or a little more. And what that will do is ultimately make this sauce a whole bunch thicker. I'm also gonna put a pretty, pretty good dose of oregano in there. And I also put a little bit of black pepper in there. And then that will let that simmer down for just a minute. All right, as you can see, it's thickening up pretty good, guys. And what the thing we want is with any other fish, you don't want to overcook it. So we're going to wait till the last, you know, basically I want the sauce to be totally done, as thick as I want it and everything else, because a fish is going to cook in like three or four minutes. Next thing we're going to add is a bunch of olives. And these are just olives that I quartered. They're delicious. Mm. I love olives. But we're going to add a few of these, not a whole bunch. 
big chunks of white bass. And I just chunked them up, took the red meat out of them because they are gonna be cooked into a dish like this. And at this point, we're gonna gently pour all those in there. And that fish is gonna cook in just a matter of minutes. It's not gonna take very long. So as soon as you can poke it with these tongs and it'll come apart, you know it's done. So we're gonna put a pretty good handful of that flat leaf parsley in there, probably, I don't know, a couple tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley. So guys, here, here's your test right here, watch this. I can take this piece of fish and I can flake it with my tongs. See that? Now I know for sure it's done. So we'll let that break down into the sauce just a little bit. And then we're gonna go in here and put some of this pasta in here. And I'm gonna be careful about this. And we'll stir it in. Probably should have used a little bit bigger pan in this particular case, guys. But we'll stir some of this in there. And again, because I tossed it with olive oil before I put it in here, it didn't all stick together. We'll toss this down in, mix it back in real carefully, and this dish will be done. Okay guys, the fish is done, the pasta's come up to temperature, so the last thing I'm gonna do with this is hit it with a tiny bit more flat leaf parsley and a little bit of fresh Parmesan cheese that I grated at home. And you can see it's not the kind in the can that's not even real cheese. This is real Parmesan cheese, little snowflakes from heaven right there, people. And now I mix that all in, and that is your entire spicy fish pasta dish. So we'll put the recipe at fishfulthinker.com. If you would like to check out that recipe, we'd love you, to, love you to do so. It's really simple, it begs for improvisation. If you don't like olives, you black olives, you could put green olives, whatever, you can mix it up for sure. But uh, it's spicy, a little bit salty, uh, just a really good use of any kind of fish you might have around as well. So like I said, fishfulthinker.com for the recipe. And uh, we appreciate you guys watching very much. If you wanna join the conversation on social media, we would appreciate that as well. Otherwise, we hope you'll tune in and we'll see you next week. Now I gotta eat. Time now for today's best catch, brought to you by Berkeley. Well, what I'm figuring out, Dan, is the flicker shad's not a bad way to catch them. I think it's a great way, it's and a great bait. I use a lot of them. You got boxes oh, and boxes of yeah, them. I got boxes and boxes of them. Berkeley, catch more fish. No, nope, caught some schmutt. Oh, he came off. Okay, here we go, let's try this one more time. Okay, bait's in the water, here we go, ready? He freaking thumped it. How did he not stay on there? Get the snot off my face. Okay, here we go. We'll start talking about intelligence. You're discombobulated. <laughs> Boy, did you get that in the net? Sorry, Look buddy. At that. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> One more time. Cut. We'll start that again. Yeah. If you don't, cut. Hang on, time out. Time out for a second. All right, you can cut, Tim. Cut. Nice job, Dan. <laughs>